now. And I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And we are going to get started. There we are. We're going to get started with our Nearpod lesson. I'm going to move you guys down just a little bit. And here we go. We're going to start with a welcome back video. I hope you enjoy it. to Miss Aldridge and Miss Hardin's virtual orientation. Good morning, good morning. We are here with you um, live and large and in charge and we're excited to have you in virtual school. Um, I'm, we're going to introduce ourselves to you really quickly and um, we'll just keep going through the presentation. If you could give me a visual that you're hearing me and that you're seeing the Nearpod. If you could give me a visual thumbs up Excellent. Feels good. Oh, feels that. good. That feels good. Great. Awesome. So I'm going to give it to Miss Harden. Oh, thank you. Hi, guys. I'm Miss Harden, and I'm going to be doing your math for this year. I'm actually starting my 15th year of teaching all here at CVE. Uh, so this is, I've always been in third grade, so this is going to be a little different for me. Uh, I have two kids, both of them here at school with me. One's in first and one's in fifth, both boys. A uh, big sports fan, if you see on my screen, I'm a Vols fan and a Braves fan, which I'm getting with Miss Aldridge, her daughter, <coughs> starting school at UTK. Yeah. Um, I love outdoors, love the beach, love going on hikes, bike riding, anything outside. Uh, this is a new experience for all of us, I know, but I'm excited to get started. I can't wait. It's going to be great. And I am Laura Aldridge. Let me click on our next slide there. I'm Laura Aldridge, and it's what's cool is that Miss Harden and I have always like known one another, but we've never taught together before because I have taught fifth grade. Uh, I taught fourth grade one time, <laughs> um, and so we're we're in we're we've both known one another for forever. But this is the first time we're getting to teach with one another, so it's really exciting. And I love the fact that when I was reading your stuff, Miss Harden that I have only ever taught at Chattanooga Valley too. So we, we are eagle through and through. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. That's really cool. Um, I have two kids as well, but my kids aren't anywhere near here. I've got a son who's in Montana State. He's at Montana State. Um, and he's in transition there in Bozeman, Montana. And then I have a daughter whose name is Montana, weirdly. Um, and yeah, she's at UTK. She's in Knoxville, Tennessee. So I've got oldies and Miss Harden has youngies and, um, and that's cool. But I'm going to tell you that my very favorite child is my four legged child. <laughs> um, and her name is Addie Evangeline Woody Wendell. And you see her on my slide right there. That's my black lab. And you'll hear me talk about her a lot. Um, I love her and yeah, it's awesome. I want to go ahead and tell you right off the bat that the slides that you see here will be posted um, onto Google Classroom. You'll be able to go back and read what these slides say at your own leisure. So don't try to read all that microscopic writing now. Just let it be and you can go back and see that in a little bit. Okay, so we'll give, keep going. Now that we've talked about ourselves, then um, I want you to tell us about you. So tell us, and because we're focused on parents today, I know we've got kids in the room. Hello, my lovely children. This is really for your grown-ups. So grown-ups, would you tell us one thing you love about your student? 
We're going to give you a few minutes. Those should pop up on your screen. Tell us one thing you love about your students. This is an opportunity for you to shout out. We're going to let you shout out for just a second here. Oh, we got a sweetheart. <laughs> A sense of humor, that's good. A loving child, that's awesome. Compassionate. Aww. <laughs> oh, that's great. And I'm seeing some folks that are in the chat on Zoom too. I see here that you're muted. Everybody's muted except for me and Miss Harden right now. Eager to learn, spunky and kind. I love that. Caring and easygoing. One of the cool things about today's presentation is that we are using Nearpod. And this is a lesson format that your students are going to be using. So I thought it'd be really cool for you to kind of experience what it would be like for them in a lesson and what you're doing here with these comments is really similar it's, it's what your kids are going to see too so that's kind of fun that you guys are being able to see that that's awesome unpredictable oh no <laughs> i can't wait to know what that is we'll give you a few more seconds to shout out for your for your student these are very telling aren't they, they miss harden Funny girl, <laughs> family funny girl. That's good. Imaginative. I love that. Hard worker. That's cool. All right, great. Thanks for participating in that. I hope you enjoyed that. That was kind of fun. And the next thing that we're going to do right now is, um, well, hopefully if it'll come up. Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. There we go. It's, it's taking a minute because it's a. There we go. Yeah. Miss Culberson has put together a presentation that she wants you guys to watch. It is a little lengthy. I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's about nine minutes long, but it is very important information about caring for your Chromebook, acceptable use of using the devices, and then just being at home at school, what some of the expectations are for attendance and things like that. So I want you to give your full attention to this presentation that comes directly from our principal. So without further ado, let's give her her. Hello Eagles, this is Ms. Culberson and on behalf of Ms. Lou Allen and myself, I would love to welcome you back to school. I want to welcome all of our virtual learners and their parents to our virtual learning orientation. I'm just going to briefly go over some information regarding our virtual learning that will be taking place this school year. First of all, on behalf of Mrs. Llewellyn and I, I would love to welcome you back to school. And just a reminder, our online virtual learning classes begin on Thursday, August the 20th. And after this brief overview, your teachers will be giving you schedules and lots of information that will help you to be successful virtual learners. First of all, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about attendance. Um, just like students who are in person, our virtual learning students will attend class every school day. If a student is ill or unable to attend the virtual classes, a parent should contact the school and that way we can mark the absence excused in power school all of the attendance rules that apply to our in-person learners also apply to our virtual learners and attendance will be recorded in power school each day so we want to make sure that you demonstrate good attendance by attending the online classes and completing your online work 
The virtual school day hours are 8 a.m. until 2.15 p.m. And that's the same as the school day. And of course you will have scheduled breaks just like you do when you're in real um, in-person school. You have recess and lunch and those uh, stretch breaks. And you will have that within your schedule as well. Your teachers at each grade level will be going over those schedules with you, letting you know the times that you log in for the virtual instruction uh, that's live and the times that you'll be working independently on tasks. Um, our virtual instruction will be aligned with the in-person instruction. We want to make sure that our students who are learning virtually are not behind when they're able to return to school. So you will be covering the same standards as our students are that are in person in the building. Now let's talk a little bit about our use of our Chromebooks. Each of you will be assigned a device to use a Chromebook. And if you already have a device that is checked out to you, from Walker County Schools, or if you have a personal device at home, you are able to use those as well. But for every student in Walker County each year, we always sign an acceptable use policy, or an AUP is how that's called in short. That must be signed in order to receive a Chromebook and to access the technology. So by signing this agreement, you acknowledge that the technology will be used appropriately for school purposes and that you are responsible for caring for the devices that are with you in your home. And a paper copy of the AUP will be available for parents to sign when they come to pick up the devices or if you would like you can scan this QR code and look through the AUP and even sign that document electronically. It's your choice if you'd rather do it electronically or with paper. Now let's talk just a little bit about caring for your Chromebook. It's always a good general rule for care and um, that you can wipe the computer clean with a cloth and disinfectant wipe but never spray a cleaner directly onto your device. That will mess your device up. We want to make sure that you keep your device away from any kinds of electronics dangers, such as liquids, food, pets, etc. The next item is, if you encounter any trouble with your device, you should contact your virtual learning teacher via Class Dojo, and directions will be given to you for repair and um, replacement if necessary. Third, let's talk a little bit about the power supply. Be very, very careful when you are plugging in the power supply to the device. The plugs are pretty delicate with our Chromebooks and they break really easily. So when you're plugging them in and taking them away from the, the outlet, you want to be very careful not to, um, to be gentle with the device. If you encounter trouble with your Walker School's email, you can call Mrs. Llewellyn. She is our resident tech expert at our school and I have listed the school number in this presentation but you can call and ask to speak to Mrs. Llewellyn and she probably can fix any email issues that you encounter. Finally let's talk about what to expect at our device pickup day. First of all a device and a power cord will be issued to your student and a record will be kept through our online inventory. We'll check it out to you just as we would a library book or some other item. At the device pickup date, you will sign several school documents that are required annually for Walker County students to sign. And finally, at the device pickup date, you will meet your student's virtual teacher and you can ask any questions that you have. Next, let's talk a little bit about communication. Communication between our virtual learners, their parent who's helping them, and the virtual teachers is vital. We must keep that communication going back and forth because that's how our teachers are going to teach you and reach you. 
Teachers will primarily use Class Dojo to communicate important information to you. So please make sure you are signed up and you are using this tool to check for updates and announcements. Google Classroom is the platform for instruction for all virtual students in Walker County. So your Walker County Schools email, along with a class code that you will receive from your teachers, will allow you to access Google Classroom. Students who are in third through fifth grade, they are already really familiar with the functions of Google Classroom. They've used it um, in their classroom, so they know very well how to use Google Classroom. In our lower grades, your teachers, your virtual teachers can walk you through with any questions that you have. Finally, I just want to thank you and Mrs. Llewellyn and I are going to turn over the 2020 virtual orientation meeting right over to your teachers. Our virtual teachers this year are Mrs. Aldridge and Mrs. Harden. They are working with third, fourth, and fifth grade. Also, we have Mrs. Leslie Miller, who will be our virtual teacher for first and second grade. We have Ms. Sheila Ledger and Mrs. Crumley, who are helping with kindergarten virtual learning. And then we have Mrs. Pickard and Mrs. Lewis, who are also um, supporting our learners through virtual learning. And Ms. Jennifer Smith, who is providing speech services through our, um, to our virtual learners. So all of these team, this team of awesome teachers will help you to learn virtually at home until mm -hmm. you are back with us in person. I hope that you are all safe and well and you become excellent virtual learners and I'm turning it over to your teachers. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dig right into communication because Ms. Culberson uh, covered all of that. And um, I know that in this presentation, I can only anticipate that you will generate questions, okay? And um, as much as I want to answer those questions as soon as possible, one of the best ways to ask questions, because we're managing multiple grade levels and everybody is in a different spot with all kinds of different technical issues, technical devices, you have, a, it, it's really like a big, um, uh, complicated kind of way to meet all of your needs, the best way to communicate with us is through Class Dojo. And that way we don't miss anybody. It sends us notifications, your names are bold, we get little red dots that says this parent wants to talk to you. And so it's very important that you use Class Dojo. Now email is also available, but emails don't send us notifications during the day like Dojo does. It's just not set up that way. Um, and so Class Dojo is the number one way to communicate with us. It will be the number one way that we communicate with you. Private messages are private. Um, so if you need to send us a private message, it, it, it's very similar to a text message or an email. It does send us a notification. So please get onto Class Dojo as soon as possible. If you're having technical difficulties with that, then we will help you out getting logged in. Um, the other two ways that you're going to get information about the school is through the school website and through the Chattanooga Valley Elementary School Facebook page. So those are other two ways that you can communicate. And I want to just take a quick poll right now on, um, on Nearpod of um, who has, who's connected to Class Dojo. Uh, either no, but I'm getting connected and it's going to be awesome, or yes, it's a fantastic way to communicate. So if you'll go ahead and fill out the poll on Nearpod, so you may have to flip from the, if you're watching on Zoom, you may have to flip into Nearpod. And I've had a few of you who've kind of come in just a little bit late who came in on Ms. Culberson's um, presentation. Don't worry about going to Nearpod at this point. Just keep watching my Zoom presentation. But those of you who are hooked into Nearpod, go ahead and take that poll and let me know how you feel about Class Dojo.
While you're um, answering on Class Dojo, I see a few answers still coming in on Nearpod about Class Do Dojo. I'm going to let you know that Ms. Harden is monitoring the chat on Zoom. So if you have a question um, that you have uh, about, um, in, you know, if you just have something that you just want to, ask, want to ask us on the chat, she's monitoring the chat so that we can get to those um, at the very, very end. And it looks like we have several of you who um, who say, "Yeah, we're on near we're 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 on Nearpod, we're on Class Dojo, and we love it. It's fabulous and it's awesome." And we have oh, and what does the chat say? That they love it. They love to get responses very quickly from it. That's cool beans. Makes me happy. Class Dojo really is great. And the class story is a place for us to put shout outs and to brag on your kids and to show work that they're doing. And it, it's, it's really awesome. So I, I love using it and um, getting in touch with you. All right. So let's talk about some of the expectations that we have for third through fifth grade virtual learners. Um, I'm about to share with you a syllabus and a syllabus is just a really fancy word for what we expect out of kids for learning. And um, it is gonna have a place for you to sign off that you read it. Um, and I'm just gonna very quickly just talk to you about one of the most important things on the syllabus to, to me and I hope to Ms. Harden as well. And that is um, the, um, expected values. It's going to be right here. I'm highlighting them. If we follow all of these expected values from the get-go, all of us, Ms. Harden and I, families, grown-ups in the family, kids in the family, then this year is going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. It really is. Ron Clark is um, a teacher in Atlanta, Georgia. Don't hold that against him. Okay, we know. Um, but Ron Clark is an excellent educator in Atlanta, Georgia. He um, has written several books. One of them is called The Excellent, excellent Eleven. And it, he outlines in that book values that really help us be excellent human beings in the world. And these are what I consider to be behaviors that I am going to commit to giving you, that Ms. Harden is going to commit to giving you, and that we ask you to commit to give back to us, to show enthusiasm, to have a sense of adventure, and you already do, because guess what? <laughs> we are pioneers here, people. I mean, you're a pioneer in the world of virtual learning with us, and it's so exciting. So you already have that sense of adventure, being creative, reflective, having balance in our lives, um, having compassion, and I love, you know, one of you have already said you have a compassionate kiddo, and that's so awesome. Confidence, both in ourselves and in others. Um, a sense of humor, oh, humor, that was one of the ones that you guys had too. A common sense, we don't, we're not born with that, by the way. Common sense is something that we grow in and that we learn, and so, um, and that, that'll be something that we talk about this year. Um, appreciation for others and then resilience, standing for what we believe. And um, so those 11 things I really wanted to highlight right off the bat because those 11 things build up all of the learning that we do. If we follow those 11 things, then brilliant learning will occur. Um, there are other things on this syllabus that talks about um, the Georgia Milestones, there's a link there. I'm gonna go from the top now and show you that um, this is the link for PowerSchool. Um, PowerSchool is how you access student grades, uh, attendance and things like that. Uh, Class Dojo link is there. Our telephone number is located here. Emails are also located here. And I want to highlight this right here. We have created a Google form that is called the Request for Help form. It is the, um, the lifeguard ring that we have sent out to you. If you ever find yourself in any kind of situation where you need help, that's what you fill out and we will get with you ASAP. As I scroll down, there are a couple of academic policies I just wanna cover very quickly and then I'm gonna move on. The first one is about benchmarking. Benchmarking is, is where we see where your kid is in the learning process, okay? Um, it is where we are gonna be giving your kids a really a, a, 
I hate to say it, but we haven't been in school for five months, right? Mm -hmm. And so we don't have an end of the year benchmark for your students. So it's logical and natural that we do a lot of benchmarking at the beginning right here. So some of the things that your student will have to do will be taking different assessments so that we can get an idea of learning gaps that we may need to address um, and where your student is so that we can differentiate instruction for them. Give me a thumbs up if, we're, if you're following me so far. Awesome sauce. So don't be surprised if for the next two weeks you're like, good, good grief, Miss Aldridge and Miss Harden, all they're doing is testing my kid. <laughs> yep, we are. We're testing them to see where they are. <laughs> and so that we can get them going, okay? So that'll be our baseline. Um, I'm not gonna talk about reassessments right now or extra credit, but I do wanna talk about the materials for virtual learners. So obviously you need to have an internet ready device. Um, a power source and a quiet space. Uh, we're going to be talking about that more on Thursday and Friday when we have school with your student because we're going to expect your student to not just rely on you for everything, but you know, your student needs to be responsible for their things too. So we're going to be teaching them how to find that quiet space. I see some families that have several siblings and you know, there's a lot of things going on. So we're going to talk about how to manage and balance our space and, and, um, and things like that, how we can advocate for ourselves as learners at home and, um, and have our internet ready device or power source or quiet space. But parents, I am going to ask you to help us monitor the schedule. So scheduled monitoring of your student. Um, because there's going to be times where we're live with them, just like we are now. But then there's going to be times when we're not. Okay. And that may require you to just step in and say, hey, how are you doing on that? You know, I heard Miss Aldridge and Miss Harden this morning. They were talking about what you needed to do. How do you have it done? Um, so that's something that we would naturally do in the classroom to help your student out. We're going to be relying a little bit on you in that partnership too. Shockingly enough, we are asking that you also have pencils <laughs> and spiral notebooks and crayons because some of the things, some of the activities that we do, just because we're typing all the time, doesn't mean we're gonna lose the fine art of writing, the fine art of representing mathematics. And so all of those things are gonna uh, be important for you to have because we're gonna ask you to maybe um, diagram. We're gonna ask you to represent your thinking in math. We're gonna ask you to write um, pieces of writing and text and snap a picture of it. And so you need to have those materials handy. If anyone needs those materials at the school, typically, you know, we have students that uh, may need those materials and help with those materials. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us on a message in Dojo um, and just say, hey, my student may need a, a box of crayons or my student may need those spiral bound notebooks. Please let us know so that we can make sure they're equipped. Okay, awesome. Um, we've talked about class dojo and academic integrity just means let your kid do their own work. We're cool with that, right? And then at the very bottom of this, you're going to see that there's a link that you can, you can't click it right now because I'm not let, I'm not letting you do that yet. I'm going to share this on Thursday and Friday in the class dojo that I'm about to talk to you about and you'll be able to sign off then. Okay. So you'll grown ups will be able to read this, um, later in the week and um, ask questions if you need to, and then sign off later, okay? So no pressure at this moment. All right, let's keep going. So let's talk about Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday are gonna look a little different than next Monday. Next Monday, we're gonna hit the ground running with our regular schedule. But for Thursday and Friday, we understand that there's going to be some uh, growth and figuring out how we're gonna get online, figuring out how we're going to um, connect with our device, troubleshooting errors and problems, okay? So Thursday and Friday, we're gonna treat kind of like a boot camp, okay? And that means that on Thursday and Friday, you are only gonna meet with us one time. Third grade will meet one time, fourth grade will meet one time, fifth grade will meet one time live, just like we're doing now. And during that time, we're going to make sure that everybody is hooked up. We'll have some activities to do, but really it'll be to make sure that everybody knows how to log in, 
um, how to log out, how to access materials in Google Classroom and things like that. So this schedule for Thursday and Friday, if you've got a piece of paper or if you want to screenshot this right now, do it. Because tomorrow when your student comes to pick up the, and, and, and maybe we can print this out and it'll be in your materials tomorrow too, but just make sure you know, if you're a third grader, third graders, hold up your hands. Hey, third grade, shout out, represent. Third grade, you guys are gonna meet at nine o'clock, okay? On Thursday and Friday. Fourth grade, hands up fourth grade, give a shout out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you are. You guys are gonna meet at 10. And fifth grade, give it to me fifth, high five for the fifth. There you are. You guys are gonna meet at 11 on both of those days. Okay, all right, so make sure that you have that information. That'll be this Thursday and Friday only. So what happens during live lessons? I wanna go ahead and lay this out for you. So on Thursday and Friday, I don't have to mute your video, okay? <laughs> um, I wanna go ahead and just lay it out. Um, all students who are virtual are gonna be required to attend their classes on time. Um, I know today I started two minutes late. I don't anticipate ever starting late. That's not how I roll. Being on time means that you're five minutes early and that you're waiting in that waiting room in order to get online, okay? Um, and students who, who come in late will be considered tardy. Students who are there in the waiting room and ready to start when time is will be attendance ready, okay? So that's awesome. Um, you, in order to be counted present, you have to be visible on the video. <laughs> mm. Do you know in the spring, it was crazy, y'all. Um, there were students who didn't have their video on. It wasn't them that was online. It was another person. I've got to be able to see you, okay? So I've got to be able to see your face, and you've got to be able to prove it's you that's online. Not, you know, not you who logged in with your puppy and then walked away because you turned your video off, all right? So i got to see you. Um, we've planned tons of fun activities, so um, we want you to be as interactive as possible. So arrive on time. You will be muted when you come in, but your video won't. Um, so have that ready. Make sure you have a calm and quiet spot. Your camera is on. You're paying attention and participating. The universal sign to get my attention is hand up. Can everybody practice? There you go. Hand up says, and I see the blue. Yeah, I'm seeing you now. Bloom was the first one that got it to me. But that that's hand up, right? That tells me, hey, I need you. And that works the same in virtual learning, okay? Um, come prepared. Make sure you have your Chromebook charged and ready to go. And if it's not charged, then you are delicately using your charger to be plugged in and ready to go. Um, be respectful to those that are in the class with you. That goes back to those 11 values though as well that we appreciate people. And then when it comes time for you to speak, we'll practice this, but you're speaking clearly and loudly enough for the group to hear you. Um, the number one thing that I want you to notice on this slide is in the blue blast text mm -hmm. bubble. It says, and you can mouth it with me if you want to, no food or drinks near your Chromebooks. Couple of reasons for that. Number one, water on electronics plugged up to electricity is never safe. Nod your head if you understand what I just said to you. Yes, good. Uh, liquid near electronics is never ever good. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. And food as well. Food gets down in the underneath the uh, uh, no joke people out there in zoom world virtual learners I have cleaned out Chromebooks before <laughs> that had beautiful mold underneath the keyboard where food had gotten in there and it was growing out from under the keyboard like a chia pet we do not want chia pets in Chromebooks it's disgusting okay so just avoid that at all costs so that's what you can expect in live lessons this Google Classroom slide is only to show you. Nothing about this slide is interactive. You cannot click on the link and go to Google Classroom yet. Um, mainly because 
all of you will get your email address and password tomorrow when you pick up your, your device or when you pick up your materials. Some of you aren't getting a device from us. So when you pick up your materials tomorrow, one of the things you'll get is your login. And we will be logging in on Thursday and Friday into Google Classroom. We'll get all that straightened out. This is just a picture to show you what your student will see when we are logging in. So you'll probably see this again on um, Class Dojo for logging in on Thursday. So when you go to Google Classroom, you'll type in your school email address and your password, and then the link will be given to you. That link is going to take you to the bulletin board. Please give me a thumbs up if your screen now shows the bulletin board. It says third, fourth, and fifth grade bulletin board. Shall we mention that they need to log in through Google first before they go to Classroom? Yeah, we can. <laughs> you'll log into you'll, you'll log into google yeah, when you open up your chromebook we'll walk you through all that in, in the thursday <laughs> zoom so this is the bulletin board the bulletin board is a place for you to um check in in the morning it's it's your first place that you go to okay because your students classes may actually end up looking kind of like this okay on your on your screen you may see several classrooms right well, the bulletin board is the very first place you need to go to because it is here that Ms. Harden and I will be posting important information and your agenda will be here, um, but your morning check-in will be here. Morning check-in is another one of the tools that we are going to use for attendance, okay? And that morning check-in actually gives a time stamp for when you signed in and um, answers any kinds of questions. So let's just check out that morning check-in really quickly. Your morning check-in looks like this. It asks for your email address, your first and last name, and this is for your student. This, uh, grown-ups, if you wanna check in, fine. That's, uh, but this is for your students, okay? Um, you'll select your grade level, what grade you belong to, and then you will tell me how you're feeling that day. Ready to work, happy, sleepy, upset, silly, sick, sad, and then, do you have anything that you need to tell me about school or life? Were you able to find your work for the day? Do you need any help getting started? And what questions do you have about your assignments? Um, every day, your student needs to complete this form, okay? Every day. Um, again, it will get time stamped to let us know uh, wh about what time you're getting started. This will be the first thing that they do on the daily bulletin board, on the bulletin board every day. Also, like I said, this is a place for Ms. Harden and I to post information. When you get logged into Google Classroom on Thursday, okay, remember, we're taking it a little bit slow, so on Thursday, then you'll find this presentation that I'm giving you today. You will find the virtual syllabus for you to sign off on. You'll find Ms. Culberson's virtual meeting. So those of you who came in and maybe in the middle of Ms. Culberson talking, you can go back and you can watch that. Um, and you'll find our commercial. How many of you just loved our commercial that we started with? We are such tech nerds. I love, you know. So, oh, this, I see some smiling, Ms. Harden, they loved it. They loved it. And so all of that will be there. Um, so that is your, that's kind of what Google Classroom will look like. Google Classroom is the platform through which everything will be delivered for instruction, okay? We may use other apps during the year, like Nearpod, like the one that we're using now for our presentation. We may use um, a math manipulative website. We may be using Freckle. We may be using uh, Moby Max. We may be using um, Education Galaxy. Your students are familiar with some of those things. And so, um, but Google Classroom will be where they know what to do. Okay, all right. Um, the next thing that we're not going to log in today, we're going to skip that over. And so this is the last thing that I wanted to share with you today. Again, I can anticipate on your Nearpod screen, you may want to leave the Zoom if you're watching me on Zoom and go back to the Nearpod presentation. If, you're, if you didn't get logged into Nearpod, then you can just use the Zoom chat if you want to. But I know that probably our presentation has, it's run 45 minutes. Um, and you, I anticipate that this has generated questions. And so um, because there are a few of you on the chat right now, 17, um, we're gonna take a minute to um, 
let you put your questions on the parking lot, either on Nearpod or ask them in the chat. And we're gonna take right about five minutes to answer as many questions as we can. If we can't get all the questions in the next five minutes, then we'll definitely send you a dojo with the answer to your question as best as we can. So right now we're gonna answer questions. I'm not gonna mute anybody because that'll be a lot of talking at this moment. And I haven't trained anybody on how to do that yet. <laughs> so we're using the chat and um, the parking lot on Nearpod. So I'm gonna stop talking and we'll start answering some questions. No questions? I'm not getting any questions yet. Maybe you guys are thinking about it. I'll sink in. Okay, so will daily schedules be given Thursday? Yes, on Thursday and Friday, we will um, issue those out. Third grade will have their own schedule. Fourth grade will have their own schedule. And fifth grade will have their own schedule. And we will share those out during boot camp on Thursday and Friday. And that regular daily schedule will begin on Monday. Monday, Monday morning. And correct, um, third graders on Thursday and Friday will log in at 9. Fourth graders will log in at 10. And fifth graders will log in at 11. Mm -hmm. Just for Thursday and Friday. Yeah, good questions. Is everybody, um, everybody knows when they're coming tomorrow for materials pickup, right? Thumbs up if you're like, yep, I know I'm coming to pick up materials tomorrow. Okay, awesome. Oh, thanks for the, the emoji thumbs up. Impressive. Good job. What will be included in the packets tomorrow? Great question. Normal first day of school paperwork, I think. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see me for just a second. Okay. And this will be back on my video. I am still able to see your parking lot questions. So if you're on Nearpod and you're typing in a question, don't freak out because it went away. I can see your questions. So, um, keep asking them there if you'd like to, not a problem. This is what will be, this is your back to school packet, right? So it's just like the ones that you always get every year. Inside um, will be your emergency card. Ms. Culberson and Ms. Llewellyn did ask that you go ahead and fill out the emergency card um, just so we have it on record um, because we feel like there may be a couple of scenarios. There may be a scenario that we continue virtual learning and you know, it's, and everybody goes virtual, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, or it may be that you decide that virtual isn't for you and you want to return back to school. We want to go ahead and have the emergency card filled out either way. Okay. The emergency card also included in there will be a link to the um, FYI, which is all of the code of conduct and information from the school. And this QR code will be the electronic version of that. On the back is the acceptable use policy that Ms. Culberson talked about that you will need to sign because you're getting a, if you get a device from school, but also because you're going to be using a school email, you're going to be interacting with peers, you are going to be interacting with staff, and all of this covers um, the, uh, the, the fact that you understand that your student is plugged in at school, even through home. Okay, so that'll be something that you sign. Um, there's an internet information form here um, that for nine bucks a month. And then we're, all students will also fill out the um, free and reduced lunch form. I know you're at home, but you're still considered a student of Chattanooga Valley Elementary School. And so everyone is being asked to fill this out. It's very important um, that everyone does um, because I'm just going to lay it out for your parents. Money is tied to this, so we, we need you to fill that out. And then um, 
this is for this green paper is for um Uh, it's for Miss Zell. It, it, yeah, it's for it's for our parent involvement specialist. That's the person I was trying to think. So that's that's what you'll get. Some people may have a few more pages to sign, and some people may have a few less. Yes, and your you'll have your passwords and your login information, and then uh, you will have a packet of papers. There's just some math tools that your students will use throughout uh, the year. It will be in the packet also. Uh, let me clarify. Pick up tomorrow. When you pull in, we're going to bring the paperwork out to you. You will fill that out while you're here. We, we're not, they're not taking it home. Correct? No, no, yeah. No, no. yeah, not taking it home. So you will actually fill out everything while you're here in your car, and then we will bring it back in from you once you've filled it all out. Yeah. So I don't know if any of you like went, had a kindergartner and went to kindergarten registration this year at AEC, but you just parked and they came out to you. It's like going to Chick-fil-A. Yeah. You know, you park, we bring it to you. It's our pleasure. And we take care of things for you there. So um, you'll also get a, a workbook for reading that'll go in there. You'll get a bag and you'll get the packet, but you'll fill out the packet. You'll park and fill it out. We'll bring out a clipboard for you. That was probably way, way more than what you wanted, wasn't it? I don't know. <coughs> I don't know. Let's see. Yes, there's two glasses. Let's see. They want to know pickup times. Oh, pickup times. Well, um, if you are if you need to know your pickup time, uh, send, us, probably send us a dojo. Yeah. Because <laughs> the form you filled out last week, you chose a pickup time. And, uh, but if you forgot or if you need to change, just dojo us and we'll set you up with a new time. We're doing it every hour. So it was either nine or 10 or 11. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. so like, you know, kind of like Walmart pickup was, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Chick-fil-A, Walmart. Can you yeah. tell what I've been doing this summer? Um, but you know how like at Walmart, you have a window. So you just, you know, but if you don't remember your window time, send us a dojo. We'll remind you what your window time is. Okay. Let's see. So good. Okay. I think that's it. Guys. Congratulations on your first Zoom. Miss Harden and I are going to elbow high five because we're yes, just so we proud of you guys. I have one more thing. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, girl. We do not have everyone, No, uh, not everyone has filled out the paper stating whether you need a Chromebook or not. So Ooh, yeah. if you have not told us, send us a quick dojo if you need a Chromebook from the school. Send us a quick dojo to let us know, please, so we can have yeah. all that set up for you. We're going to pack them up today. Yeah and get them all set up and labeled. And we want to make sure we don't leave anybody out. Yes. We want you covered because we love you. Okay. All right. Well, I'm really proud of you guys for being online. I am loving seeing your faces and um, I can't wait to see you uh, tomorrow in person and um, for a hot second. And then on Thursday, what happens when we get three parties in a row? <laughs> I don't even know no. the answer to tardy questions. That's above my pay grade at this moment. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll cross the out. tardy bridge yep. when we get there. Is that okay? We'll okay. We'll make it. We're going to make it. <laughs> All right. Okay. I love you guys and I will see you Bye, soon. Bye everybody. Bye.